Welcome back. Coffee with colada. See what's on the back? Make sure you put your finger on the button, your thumb. Subscribe to this YouTube. I even forget the name. All right. You see the oxygen? I'm still there. I could take it off, but I'm not going to because I want to give you my best. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Double betrayal. I'm going to call this double betrayal. Not in my wildest dreams would I ever would have became a government witness or an informant. I would die for before I'd done something like that. I've seen too many of my friends in the 30s, not the year they were born, 30 or better, that were murdered by the Chicago outfit and their own friends. I know how the game is played. And I wasn't going to let that happen to me. When I found out for sure that Tony was actually ordered to kill me only because of what he told Joe Lombardo about me, taking over the town, killing people, robbing everybody, doing everything with the screw guys I had. There's no disputing that these guys were dangerous, but they were only doing what Tony told me to tell them to do. I didn't have that authority. Although they worked for me, Tony was my boss. Now, when I heard these, these comments that Tony made over a wiretap, and he was told, clean your dirty laundry, I went fucking crazy in my brain. Broke my heart. It took me the whole night in the jail cell to realize that I am not going to let this guy win. I gave my life, my blood for this guy. And he was going to sell me out. That's when I rolled. And I didn't become an informant. I became a government witness. Only to testify on things that I'd done with him. An informant wears a wire. You ought to wake up, the world. An informant's a different breed. They'll sell their soul for money. I just testified on trials. I don't know how many. I probably didn't put anybody in jail but Newman. That's about it. Because he killed somebody he shouldn't have killed. The other guys were all caught dead bang on robberies. What was I testifying on them? They were caught dead bang. They were in the courtroom testifying to save Tony. Tony was paying their case. That's what he was selling them out. Because the more you fight the government and you lose, the more time you get. They could have copped out and never did 30 years. That's the way he controlled his people, his son of a bitch. I said, now let me tell you something. After I rolled, I wasn't happy. It took me 26 years or 25 years to get it out of my system. Out of my system. Tore me apart. Was I scared of getting killed? No. We're going to die sooner or later anyway. Nobody wants to die. It's inevitable. They say pay. They pay taxes and you die. Uh, you could do one or the other, but you're going to die for sure. I can guarantee you that. Now, what do I think why Tony got killed? I'll tell you what I think. They asked me to testify in this trial, Family Secrets. I didn't want to testify in it. I wasn't obligated to. And I told them, I don't want to testify. I says, matter of fact, I just wrote a book. I says, I'll have to live with that book. Every line, every phrase, every sentence. You know, it's almost impossible to do that when you write a book. I said, because they put their own words in there. Uh, and the guy says, is it out? I said, no, but I know it's going to be out next week. I knew what they wanted to do. So I made sure I got the book out. They don't want to use you then. They don't want to use you. So when they told me there was what they had on Tony and these other guys, I looked at him. I says, it wouldn't work for me in court. He said, what do you mean? I told you I can't testify anyway, but if I did, I'd ruin your case because I don't believe it. And the guy's name was Mars. They flew all the way out to San Diego. I was living in San Diego. I met him at, uh, I forgot where the boats are, Bacadero or Embarco or so I don't know what the fuck it is. 
where all the boats are. So I met him there, and he had two agents with him. And I says, I don't believe it. I don't believe that you could actually go on a hit with six other guys or five other guys and not know who you're with except for two guys. I have never heard of that in my life. And this guy's going to say that that he was on a, a murder to kill two brothers with guys he didn't know. That's ridiculous. That's my belief, to kill two brothers. I told him. I told his prosecutor. He got quiet. He knew I was turning his case upside down. I said, and you saying that Tony went back because they were going to make Michael into a made man? I said, that's bullshit. First of all, Joey Ayup is in jail. The only guy around is Joe Ferrioli. Joe Nagol. That's his nickname. He couldn't stand Michael. He couldn't stand him. I know. He told me. He hated him. He said, then the only reason why he's still alive is because of Joey Ayupa. Did I ever tell Tony that? I couldn't tell Tony that. It was one of my visits back to Chicago. I went to Hoagie's Pub to see Michael to give a message for Tony. Joe Nagol was there. I sat down with him and he told me, what are you doing here? I said, come to see Michael. And he, a lot of choice words what he had to say. He said, I'm here to see him too. I didn't ask why, but I knew one thing. I was in a position right then and there. Either I tell Tony or I don't. If I tell him, there's going to be a walking war. A war. We're, we're going to lose because they got all the guys there. If I get my six guys, we'll win. So I, I can't tell Tony. Anyway, I says, in my heart, in my soul, I know that Michael wasn't going to become a made man. The reason I believe he was, Tony was killed, I could be wrong. And I'm not talking bad about this kid, Michael, because he's got a family. And he's probably got a good family. I know his wife. I know his wife before he married her. I don't know his children. And of course, they're going to defend their own man, and rightfully so. But don't forget, I know Michael before they were even in, they were even thought about. And I know what Michael done. Do I know he was tight with Joey Ayupa? You bet I do. Do I know he was tight with Frank Sinatra? You bet I do. The kid had a lot of things he wanted to do. But he was living off his brother's rep, Tony. Tony was the boss. So Michael flexed his muscles, which any brother would have done. But he pushed the wrong people. There's an old saying, what goes up must come down. You should always remember that. He pushed the, he pushed the hand too far. He started muscling these made guys, Joe Ferriola, uh, what's his name? I can't even think of their names now. Uh, Magnifiche, he had guys. Johnny DeFranzo, he was going around muscling everybody because he knew he had power. But don't forget, Joey Hooper goes to jail now. Tony's got a case going. Tony gets out on bond. The, that skim. Now, they said that Michael was going to be made. That's not true. So whoever told that story, I think lied. It ain't going to do no good. It ain't going to get nobody out of jail. This is my belief. Now, I learned something about witnesses. And I'm not saying the government are all crazy. They want to make a case. They could convince a guy that's testifying, they could literally convince him because he's got no friends now and he wants friends to say what they want him to say without telling him because he needs friends. He's a lonely man. This has been tried on me and I knew it and I never would do that because they kept on telling me for years, weren't you a made man? Weren't you a made man? And I kept on telling him. Only when I got to Vegas, not in Chicago. Only when I got to Vegas. They didn't want to hear it, but that's the way I left them. Now get him back to the killing. Supposedly, they told Tony, Tony, your brother's causing a lot of problems. Now you tell me if this makes sense. You need to come in with him and straighten this out. We can't talk to him alone. 
it'll probably tell us to go fuck ourselves. This is my words. You need to bring him in. Now, what's Tony going to do? He's in between a rock and a hard spot. If he don't go in and they kill his brother, he's going to think, I could have saved him. Now he's going to be on a guilt trip. And of course, there's going to be a war. If he goes in, he may be able to straighten this out. He may be able to. There's a chance. Maybe a 75% chance. He's got to take the chance. If I don't roll and I'm not in, out, this and that, I would have told him. I would have begged him not to go, and I would have went with him. And I would have never went in that fucking house. I would have made sure I was armed with my guys, and we'd have killed all them son of a bitches down there. All of them. I wouldn't have let them die, I swear. I'm God. So, I'm not trying to be a hero here. But I would, I, I would have gave my life for this guy. He goes down there with that hope. He should have known better. He should have known better. How many guys he killed, he should have known better. Now, people say, well, weren't they killed in the cornfield? That's Hollywood. They weren't killed in the cornfield. When the feds asked me, where do you think they were killed? Why didn't the hitman that was there know where they were killed? Why didn't he know the house? You mean you go to a house you don't know the house? You go to? Are you kidding me? You got to know the address. You got to know the suburb. I told the feds where it was even before it was found out. I said it was in Pensacola or Cicero. I was right. I told Scorsese on the set. We did the movie. They weren't killing a cornfield, Marty. He said, well, that's a, I'm telling you they were killing a basement. I was right. I was right. I know how they think. You know, but what are you going to do? Hollywood, all these people, these witnesses, they said Johnny DeFranzo was there. They didn't indict him. Why didn't they indict him if he was there? People say he was a rat. It's easy to put a, a label on somebody. I can't say he was a rat. But if he was there and they didn't indict him, then maybe he was. But nobody knows he was there except for the one guy, the hitman. All the other guys died natural deaths. They didn't talk. That's the best I could do for you. Again, I apologize to the family. Your brother, your father, whatever, was a good guy. He was an arrogant young man, Michael. He didn't deserve to die like that, nor did Tony. You're going to kill somebody, shoot him in the head. But the reason why they were beaten to death, they couldn't shoot guns in a residential neighborhood. They would have had to empty two guns out. You would have think the 4th of July was going on in this basement. And that's the only reason why they beat him to death. What they used, I don't know, I didn't ask. Nor do I want to know. Now I hope I aired my laundry out. That's the best I, I could tell you. Now, I remember when I was testifying against Tony in a federal building in Las Vegas. And they got, they're like a horseshoe up the hallway. Horse, uh, horse H. You got a, a quarter this way, a quarter this way, and a quarter this way. Where people walk around, you know, around different offices. So I'm with the marshals, and we're going, we're walking slow through the one hallway. And at the end of the one that's running down the center, Tony's standing down there with his lawyer, Oscar. And it's, say, I'd say, I don't know, maybe 50 feet, or a little longer, not much. I spot him. And I look, he looks at me, we look at each other in the eyes. And I go, take the deal, take the deal. I mouth it to him, take the deal. He's looking. They hush me along. I overheard the strike force attorney talking to an agent just prior to me walking down that hall because I was testifying on that day that if Oscar Goodman would take the 10 years, they would settle for giving Tony 10 years on a RICO. I thought that was a good deal. That's what I was doing, telling them, take the deal. When that deal was brought to the attorney, I imagine, he told Tony and Tony said, 10 years ain't bad. Oscar said, fuck it, we could take five or beat the case. That's what I was left 
heard. That's what I heard later. I acted like I didn't know about the tent from the strike force, nor anything else. If Tony takes the 10 years, he's not in the ground with his, he's not dead, but his brother's dead. They had to kill Michael. But Tony don't die. That's what I could tell you there. Oscar Goodman, he's like any other lawyer. I'm sure he liked Tony a lot. He liked Tony's money too. He got a lot of money out of Tony, and he'll admit that. Oscar claims he never was my attorney. Well, I didn't want him to be my attorney. He became a co-counsel. Only because Tony convinced me into using him as a co-counsel. Only reason why he could be a co-counsel and not my attorney, because he was Tony's attorney. It's a conflict of interest. John Mamet was my attorney. Tony didn't feel as though Mamet was capable. I thought he was capable of beating the case. Tony liked Oscar, and he knew that Oscar could make more money. He'll never admit it, Oscar. I gave him 10G cash. Not taxable, 10G. And he became my co-counsel. What did he do for me? He did give me a change of uh, judges. He did do that. He had some connections. I don't know who they were, but when I ripped my bond, he got me another bond, and we got it in a conference room with the judge. So he had some connections within the court. Did I like Oscar? No. Uh, I don't. He, he, I, he defended a lot of people. I think he almost admitted it that he really never kept anybody out of jail. He prolonged it, like I always said. In Tony's case, he prolonged the inevitable. Tony getting whacked. And that's the best I could tell you about Oscar. Everybody's just scared to fuck with him in his town. That's okay. I don't want to put him in jail. For what? He was a great mayor when he was there. His wife's even a greater mayor. But I don't think he was a great lawyer. Enjoy. Prescribe. Put the fin fuck the thumb on the button. Kalada. Having coffee with me. You like these mugs? They're gonna be for sale. Don't purchase one. Don't be a cheapskate. God bless you.